Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna take a look at Trevenant again in the Great Geek. This Pokemon kinda went away now thanks to the recent move update where Seed Bomb got a little bit worse. But is it actually that bad that he cannot use it anymore? We're going to take a look at this today. Very interesting because recently we had like now two regionals this weekend or like actually three. Um, and basically Trevenant kind of was nowhere seen anymore like it completely lost any potential to be used there there are only a few play players who still used their trevenant and today we're going to take a look if it's actually that bad still as you're going to see you know the matchup against mage um, which still of course is pretty decent for you we're still going to shield up the ice punch coming in here as you're going to have our trevenant our best answer for the mage jam let's see what we can do here we can get to another shadow ball against the opponent and of course, you're going to try now to reach that seed bomb, which takes now a little bit longer because you need five more energy, which basically is one more fast move from the Trevenant here. The opponent actually gets to the move a little bit earlier than I thought. But we're going to get out now the opponent's lantern here, which is going to be fine for us. The opponent is at a serve, so I'm going to swap out and I can farm them all the way down here, getting to a move there. And I should also be able to still get into a position where I can knock them out, lay down with my Trevenant. And they know that as well. They're going to forfeit first game after losing the lead hard. So, so far, so good. There is going to be a lot of teams right now that is just not prepared for Trevenant. A lot of teams just don't consider this Pokemon anymore because nobody's reusing it anymore. And this is like the common misconception there when you have like any nerf as well. Most times when something gets nerfed, people just completely abandon it and just play all the stuff that's got buffed. But honestly, this Pokemon is still amazing. Like everybody's playing currently Medicham, everybody is playing Lantern. So, like the best answer for that one is Trevenant. We see a Deox defense safe swap here. No, that man, this is not a good say up anymore in the current meta because still we're going to have the Trevenant available here, which is going to be able to do a lot of damage against them. As you can see here, I'm going to let the next Psycho Boost go through and I'm going to just go ahead and farm up a ton of energy here. Go for the Seed Bomb, we are at 100 energy. Seed Bomb now takes 45 energy instead of 40, which is actually, it is a huge deal to be fair. Like, it just definitely makes this Pokemon a little bit weaker. But as you can see here, a lot of opponent's teams are just not prepared for this Pokemon anymore. We can go ahead and knock out this opponent there as well. We see the Dugon coming in and of course we're going to have still our Medicham in the back. And as you're going to see here right now, Medicham going to enjoy this Dugon quite a bit and they're going to forfeit this game. Next opponent, Nocturne lead. A very decent lead for us. We have to hope that we can realign as well as you're going to see a Sableye coming in. This is going to be a little bit tricky here and I know that I think I misplay this game later on but we will, we will find out shortly anyway. We're going to be able to go ahead and go toe to toe with this Sableye here. In my opinion, the best matchup, like the best way to play this one out is just to zero shield your Bastion in and go straight for the Stone Edges because like that, in the zero shield scenario, you're going to either force two shields from the opponent or force one shield and win the game the, the matchup still, which is both very decent scenarios as, can, as you can see here. This only happens with the XL variant of the Bastion, so make sure that you have the XL variant of it. And as you can see here, we can now align our Medicham against the Noctowl, which is still, of course, not the best matchup ever, but it's definitely a playable matchup, and you're going to see me make a huge mistake here. They're going to have also a Trevenant in the back, and I go for the Ice Punch here, and this is the mistake that I made. I should have went straight into my own Trevenant, I should have went straight for this Heat Bomb here, and um, don't really care too much about this one, but here I'm forced now to shield up the charge move because the opponent would have been able to, of course, then have a great time against my Medicham. Maybe I actually should have let the move go through, try to use the shield then in onto my Medicham, but like there was no way of me winning this game after I throw the Ice Punch there onto the Trevenant. Sadly, a misplay by me because I didn't really expect them to have the Trevenant themselves, but a great play by the opponent and... Interesting team by the opponent being double weak to ice. I wouldn't really want to recommend that to anybody like to play the opponent's team there even though they beat me with it. Um, double weakness to ice is in the current meta really risky. Like if the opponent face one alone sand slash it's kind of over for them. So the team that they are running didn't really make too much sense in my opinion. Yes, of course we lost against it. But in the current meta at least it doesn't really function too well I would say. We're going to see again another matchup against the Sableye. This time around an elite matchup which is going to be okay for us as well. We're going to go ahead go for the zero shield scenario again. They can use two shields if they want to but they don't want to. So we win back switch advantage as well as shield advantage which is going to be amazing for us as we now have our Trevenant against the opponent's Lantern and as you can see here again Trevenant actually maybe got a buff instead of the nerf for the current meta at least. While yes the Pokemon itself going to be weaker but the meta shifted so towards a Pokemon that's going to be easy to deal with for you here that we're going to have a great time just using a Pokemon. We can go for the Shadow Ball still do a ton of damage against the Ninetales and honestly currently at least so far in the video 
the MVP of this like team so far is the Trevenant, which is kind of funny. We have two XL Pokemon next to it, but Trevenant is the one that's really pulling the weights here. As they have another horrible lead for us, we're going to swap out into our own main champ. As they decide to stay in here and go for the Psychic first. I'm going to have to let this move go through here. But it's going to be okay for us. Let's see what's coming in. It's going to be a Tentacruel. And this is going to be amazing for us. As you're going to see here we can reach the Psychic. And we're going to get the Shield from the opponent. As the next Psychic is coming through here. We will be able to go ahead and get the near knockout against the opponent here. So we have a Shield advantage. We can go back into our Bastion. And we just have to hope that there's going to be a, some kind of neutral matchup for our Travenant in the back. That's all I'm really hoping for. If this is the case, we will be able to win this game, but it's going to come down to the final matchup as the opponent stays in here. This kind of tells me that there most likely is not going to be a Nocto or anything in the back there. It's going to be an Auroras. This is something that I did not expect to see. This is something that you really rarely see in the Open Great League. But it's still a very decent Pokemon because it can spam those weather walls insanely fast while also having access to the move Media Beam, allowing it to erase its own attack as well as doing a ton of damage with it. So it's going to knock out our Trevenant here, which is not really ideal for us. But we still have our big boy Bastion. And while the opponent still has quite a bit of health left onto the Medicham, the charge move is going to be all resisted. And the flamethrower is going to take a bunch of the health away from the opponent. Even they allowing us to get another free fast move in. The Psychic is not going to do enough damage and we will be able to knock out the opponent with our big boy Bastion. Such a good XL Pokemon to be fair. Horrible lead again, but we're going to see a Meganium coming in. And Meganium, while it's a very decent Pokemon that I actually kind of want to take a look at as well again. Very, like, kind of forgotten Pokemon. We're still going to have the Ice Punch for those Pokemon. As you can see here, it's going to do around 50% of the health of the opponent as the friendly plan is coming through, doing some more decent damage as well here. We're a little bit lower, but counter does more damage than a Wine Whip. And we're going to take advantage of this as we're going to be able to now realign. And realigning with seeing that lead there is going to be amazing for us. I'm not going to take any risk here and farm them down. I'm just going to go straight for the Ice Punch here, just in case they get to the next charge move in time. But honestly... I most likely misplay this here a little bit. I'm gonna swap now into my Bastion here because I have to catch a charge move, but my opponent makes a great play here. Because instead of panicking and going into their own um, Swampert here, they're gonna stay in, farm up to basically one hand energy, and now go into the Swampert onto the Stone Edge. As we are debuffed, we're not gonna do as much damage. And I think the debuff there, I think they got debuffed there at least. I think the debuff actually matters quite a bit here. As you're going to see now, the opponent getting a Hydro Cannon off, we are not gonna really put them into a farm down range for us. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to try to go for the Seed Bomb now and try to knock them out here. But again, like I think if we didn't have the debuff there, I think I got the debuff at least, we would have been able to knock them out at this point already and they wouldn't get the charge move through. But because this didn't happen, the opponent's still going to be able to go into their, uh, their Reggie Steel here right now. Go for the Zap Cannon and knock us out. So, I mean, it's more likely to get the debuff onto the Zap Cannon than not, so I guess it's fair. We're going to see a Hypno in the lead. This is going to be very decent for us as we're going to be able to resist the fast move of the Hypno and generally have a decent matchup. There's only one kind of issue if they have Focus Burst, but they're going to decide to swap into the Air Zoo and they're also going to decide to click on the top or left up button there, going to allow us now to go into the next game after winning that one pretty easily. And also, again, here, we're going to see a Lantern Safe Swap. People think now that Lantern is going to be a very safe Safe Swap, but no, if you have Tramlin in the back, this is not going to be the case. What we can do here is we can let the Thunderbolt go through and we can just try to farm them all the way down here with our Trevenant. Getting enough energy to go for a Shadow Ball against the opponent's Altarium. And they're mostly not going to shield this move up because they know they're going to align themselves against the Bastion. And this is not going to be ideal for the opponent. But let's take a look at this one. We're going to do a ton of damage with this charge move against the opponent. They can farm me down and they're going to run a Medicham in the back. I have no idea what they're doing against a Charm lead or in general a Fairy type lead for this team. But everybody can play what they want to play I guess. This is something that at least I wouldn't really want to play. Even though I thought of running the uh, um, team as well, like a similar team as well. To be fair, like I can kind of study that, but I'm not sure when I'm going to run the team. But um, I have similar stuff in mind as well, so 
maybe it still does function well right now because there are not a lot of charm users to be fair. And even against something like an Alola Ninetales, the Medichim still has some play, so I guess it still can work out, but the opponent decides to swap out here. I think swapping out here was a huge mistake by the opponent. I think they should have just stayed in there, but I, honestly, I guess they needed to have the Medichim aligned against the Bastion to do any damage here, right? Because as you're going to see here right now, Bastion is still pretty healthy. Bastion has a ton of energy and Bastion has Flamethrower. And Flamethrower is going to now be enough here again to knock out a Medichamp. So while, yes, Bastion in the current meta is a little bit risky with all the steel and Medichamps around there, but honestly, it's still so worth it as you're going to be able to still knock them out here. Next opponent, we're going to see a Dunspot Steed. I think I kind of misplayed this one, but it's going to be a little bit of a trickier one anyway. I have to try to catch a charge move onto my Medichem, but I don't know when they're throwing. They actually throw a little bit early. I would have swapped out one light, uh, like afterwards there because I mostly didn't want to see MP tie there. And this time around, they're just going to have, of course, the hardest end to them back. And this kind of games just happen. Like, while this team here, what I play is honestly one of my favorite teams from earlier, like from the last season, it still works out really, really well and had great results with this team. Highly recommend you this team, by the way, if you can play this. You're still going to run into hard counter matchups. Like, they're always going to be hard counter for certain teams, especially in the Great League. There's never going to be a team that doesn't have, like, any core breaker or anything that it cannot really deal with, like, or can deal with basically with everything there, like, it, it is always going to have some kind of struggles against certain Pokemon. And this, this is not different for this one either. We're going to see a Medicham in the back again, like, it's going to be the hardest wall now for our um, Bastion, and this is not really looking too great there for us, as the, um, Opponent stuns boss still has too much health left for a seed bomb to knock them out. They're still going to shield up. Of course, seed bomb does more damage now, but it's not going to be a pretty game here as the Rockstar is doing enough damage. Plus, of course, the increased damage from rollout. I think actually matters here. I think it does one more damage here right now as well. As you're going to see here, they're going to do more damage with their fast move, putting us into two rock side range here. And of course, as you can see here, this is not going to be enough. I tried to catch, it didn't work out. I'm going to forfeit here. Totally fine, but yeah. If you enjoyed this video so far, please leave a like on the video. It really helps out the channel as well as like getting it recommended to other people. Really would appreciate this. Otherwise, of course, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. It's free as you're going to encounter an Umbreon here. I must play this quite a bit there. Should have went for one charge move first with my Bastion against the Umbreon and like stay in the matchup for a little bit. Because as you're going to see here right now, Medicham actually loses against the Umbreon in the zero shield scenario if Umbreon gets one fast move advantage, which is usually the case if they're going to use it as a safe swap. And as you're going to see here right now, I'm forced to shield up the charge move from the opponent here in order to realign my Pokemon. But of course, realignment is very important for me here. So as you're going to see here right now, I can still go for one cycle at least against the charm variant of Ninetales, which you also now know, which is better for me, definitely better for me, as I'm going to be able to deal with it with my um, other Trevenant as well. But we're going to see another fairy type in the back here with the Azumarill allowing us now to let this ice beam go through it does not do too much damage there for us and of course you can just go ahead and go straight for the seed bombs they're going to shield up the first move here which is not really the biggest issue for me as i can go for another one here in time this will do a ton of damage against the opponent it's buffed even here so it does more damage against the azumarill but as you're going to see right now, Ice Beam coming through, doing some damage there against us, but we can go for another Seed Bump here in order to knock out the opponent. And again, the Trevenant is coming in clutch, and we can go ahead and now farm them all the way down with our Bastion and win this game. Next game it might be in the final game of this video. We're going to have another Sableye in the lead. This is going to be an interesting matchup for us. Again, we usually go for the Zero Shield scenario for this matchup here, but they even give us a free fast move. But my opponent, while they give us a free, free fast move here, makes a great play going into the Reggie Steel, catching the Stone Edge for my. Bastion, I am forced to swap out immediately. Here's, of course, the question Do you go into the Medicham? Do you go into the Trevenant? And I went into my Medicham. Don't know if this was the smartest idea. Of course, the uh, Medicham is going to do more damage with the fast move alone, but the Trevenant is going to be able to resist all charge moves. So it really depends. Here we're going to get debuffed immediately as well, again, which is kind of kind of kind of unfortunate to be fair. But we're going to get out now the Swampert. And for whatever reason, I went to the Swampert. I would have went to my Sableye. Like, why do you go into a Swampert here right now? But it's going to be very nice for us. We're now getting a shield here, which we wouldn't have got otherwise. And of course, we can realign our Pokemon perfectly. 
We want to see the Ice Punch doing some decent damage and my opponent makes another huge mistake here by going for a charge move just right before I go, would die there. Like I wouldn't have got to the charge move, but this is going to be very nice for us. I'm going to let this move go through and I expect the opponent to swap out here. So I'm going to swap out as well into my uh, Bastion here right now. They're going to be forced to go for some charge moves. And again, I just don't really like to use my shields on a Bastion. And you're going to see here, I'm not going to do it to use any shield here on my Bastion, especially as this would give the opponent still some potential to win this game with the swamp herd they can now farm me down if they want to and they're going to do exactly that which is fine for me they don't get as much farm as i actually thought i thought they would get more but i still have two shields left and in this point of time Trevenant is going to uh, go ahead and clean this game up here going for one seed bomb but winning us this game here as the shadow uh, the saber goes down to one shadow claw and this is going to be it for today's video Hope you enjoyed this one. They're going to be mostly one later again. As always, you know me. I usually double upload for every day. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. You'll see two videos on the screen right now. The top team's on the right side and my recent video on the left side, a cheap team with Golbet, which is also buffed. So check those out if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.